Skywalker came in with the group of other old horses. This morning at morning check, he was perfectly fine. But again, these older horses, especially the starved down ones, they can change in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, when David came to do the feeding for the day, uh, he found him down. not the one we thought it was. It's not the one we thought. So up here we have three um, sorrel horses. They all look very similar. Unfortunately, this is the four-year-old um, saddle horse. So this is not the one that when he, that would have been the first on my list to have been down. So you checked them all this morning. Yeah, they so. were all fine this morning. Yeah. Now this one has not really been handled before, so it's not going to lock us because it was really nervous when it came through the chute. Bless its heart. This one is a kind of surprise. It's not the one I was expecting. But this one is severely malnourished. That way they came in as a group of them. I believe there were four in the group and we ended up with three of them. The one we ended up having to put down the older mare, this is the, uh, should be the four-year-old and uh, the other one is the two-year-old. And these poor little things were severely malnourished, severely. And there is a refeeding syndrome mm -hmm. that can happen that's yeah. like, there's nothing that we could do to no, prevent it. No, this is probably a good case of that because they were, I mean, she, she was pitiful. The neglect, and it's like in World War II, if I'm correct on my history, is when the soldiers, you know, if they would give the candy bars to the really malnourished uh, war uh, victims, there was a big issue with the refeeding syndrome with them too. It's just because the body's been so deprived of nutrients, even when you try to slowly introduce them back to nutrition, the body just can't handle it sometimes. This is an echo stethoscope and it's made for humans. So it's not ideally set up, you know, exactly for horses. But with it, I, like I used it the other day to confirm a murmur I heard in a horse. So this is one of those, it's a good confirmation that way. And um, actually on hers, it was low grade as well. So this is another good one on that one. I love this because it's an extra backup because where she was moving a little bit, it's hard sometimes with everything to hear those little low grade murmurs. So unfortunately we do have a murmur and her heart rate was up. Uh, she was 51 on her heart rate for a horse. So, so she is in a little bit of pain and we do have a low grade murmur, which again, that's not the reason she went down, but it's an underlying condition that is exacerbated by her poor body condition. On intake day, we didn't, uh, weren't able to detect that because she was so rambunctious in the chute. So that's one of the things about keeping a good eye on them during the quarantine time is when that we can, and they settle down some, we can pick up on more subtle things that we don't on intake day. When these horses get starved down, of course, the body uses all the fat it can first. You know, that, that's, and then it goes to breaking down the muscle and when you break down muscle, you have protein, of course. So that's when you ha lose your condition completely where you're literally skin and bones. And all that extra protein that has to be broke down to survive can damage the organs. It can damage your kidneys too much. I mean, it affects multiple body systems that way. We don't know the history on these poor horses, but I mean, they were pitiful because I remember seeing them before the auction. They were literally trying to eat the manure in their holding pen. They were starved down that bad. So, so yeah, unfortunately, um, these just didn't have a good situation before we came across them. There's a lot of times when we're rescuing horses that we are too late for them. And it's extremely frustrating because we're on the front lines rescuing these horses and we see so many horses in horrible condition. But until the, there's laws in place that are going to be enforced, um, we will continue to see this. Um, 
you know, the USDA comes to the auction, they look over everything. There's, our hands are tied other than helping them. And in this case, we got to her too late. Um, and it's, it's like this at auctions across the United States. Um, and it's just really, really sad. It's until the whole slaughter pipeline gets actually looked at. And, you know, if, if horses stop shipping, you know, these things could start going away. But as long as that slaughter pipeline is flowing, we're gonna continue to see stuff like this. And it's really sad. Right now, um, she's been given a sedative and then the sodium pentobarbital, which will actually shut her system down. Um, and she'll be very, very sleepy. It's not painful for her. It will just relieve her pain and suffering. Um, and you can see she'll just, she'll end up just relaxing and just Probably going lying to back sleep. Me, yeah. yeah. We're gonna be very busy today. We have a lot of cat spay and neuters. Um, right now we're just getting the cat's information and getting them weighed and then the surgeries are gonna start. A physical exam on this guy, sometimes it's really hard to tell if cats are male or female and especially when we have a lot of hair present. So we've confirmed that this is a male cat that's already been neutered and um, we're just gonna look at all the parts of his body to make sure that we can identify any issues so that he can go be adopted. Hi, Precious. We have, a, um, we have some people coming in to adopt, but we also have an organization that can take our cats uh, once they're spayed and neutered. So um, we, we're trying to get all our cats ready to roll. Kimberly, put his age at four. I know, we're gonna feel your kidneys. Chatty and Kathy came in together, or Caddy, so he is the male of the group. Very sweet kitties. He has a little bit of upper airway noise. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get a chest radiograph just okay. to look at those lungs. He could be like a really mild. And we've not FIV tested him or FLV okay. tested him either. Okay. So he needs a complete work. Do all the things. Yeah, he needs a complete, only thing he did, we did vaccinate and um, rabies and the basic, but we did not okay. do anything Great. else. Okay, we just need a tiny bit of blood. Right there. A good boy. What a good boy. Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. We are going to run this feline leukemia virus test um, to make sure that we don't have a more significant disease going on. It's something that we can manage, but not something that's curable. And sometimes we see it in shelter cats. So we will know in just a minute. I think we have to wait 10 minutes. Yeah. This is vanilla. Vanilla. Do you we need FIV? Yes. yes. Okay. We do that as well. And I was going to ask you, um, I pulled the AHA vaccine uh, recommendations for yeah. shelter cats. They recommend doing the one dose and then a second dose two weeks later. Are you good with that? that great. Okay, because yeah. I pulled those for them and the dogs both, which is a little different than your regular dogs. Yeah. But I told Kimberly that if you were good with that, we'll go with that. That's so. great. This is a cat that came in as a owner surrender. Hi, yeah, you're okay. Hi, sir. I know it's been it's very stressful. beautiful. And this cat is neutered. Do we know? We're, We're checking. Supposed to be. Okay. They said the Siamese one is a boy. What a good boy. Oh, we are not neutered, but we can take care of that today. I know. Yeah, we sure can. I know. 
So we have the results back from FIV FELV testing of <clears throat> the cats that we just did this morning and all of our control lines are recording and we don't have any positives, which is great. So we're gonna move forward with surgery on those cats. There's a wonderful family here to see Scarlett. Let's see if they adopt her. <laughs> so she has a spotted saddle horse that she loves to help, or she likes to ride, but we also make her, when we're done riding, she's in charge of the cleanup. Okay, great. So, yeah. <laughs> So you're taking lessons then? Well, it's not lessons, it's my cousin's Okay. Course. So okay. we just go to their barn to ride. Gotcha. Yep. She's got a basic grooming. Yes. She looks a little better than she did with her, her roll in the mud. <laughs> One of the vets who was here noticed that she had just some general tension in her body. That could be something that could be helped with like, if you had a um, chiropractor or something, okay. a massage person out periodically. Um, just because she is older, you know, that's right. something that's kind of extra, but it's always nice if you are able to do that. Yeah. Okay. I think she likes you, doesn't she? <laughs> So do y'all think you want to take her? Yeah. I mean, I'm saying yeah. Is he saying? <laughs> I'm, I was already a yeah before we got here, to be honest. <laughs> Smokey and Bandit will be surprised, our cats. Uh, okay. Our cats will be very surprised. Okay. Smile. Okay, they are getting Scarlet. Oh wow, congratulations guys. Oh, are you getting a horse? And I'll just hold on to the adoption paperwork and all of that. It'll be sitting here ready. Okay. And then when you let me know you can pick her up, then we will. Okay. As long as it's within like the next couple of days, right. like we can't. Within, the, within a week probably would be, because we couldn't hold her. Right. Well, her birthday. So yeah, that that gotcha. You're welcome. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you guys again. Yes, yes we'll pick her up. Yes, we'll so exciting. I'm going to say it may just be him coming back. If that, that's, if that's fine. Okay. That okay. would be fine. We had the shelter built because um, behind us in the pen, it was originally designed when I designed the layout of it, the horses would access a shelter over there in the corner. And then we did have some employees break this pen down into multiple areas, but there wasn't a shelter and I wasn't too thrilled about it. But we've had this shelter built and we've taken down one of the sections, but we do like to have it broken down so horses have a larger area. Um, this pen is a intake pen, so if a horse comes in, uh, they go into the barn. If they're gonna be, their intake process is gonna happen over a weekend or something, they'll go out into this pen, but there was no shelter in this pen. So this is a shelter for that pen, and uh, Keith is gonna be moving it out there today. We had it built on the road because uh, we had a lot of rain. Uh, and we weren't able to get into the pasture. Uh, but now things are starting to dry out, thankfully. It's a little bit warmer. There's a hint of spring. Spring is coming. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit of a process to move it out there. Keith actually has a hurt leg. Uh, get, woke up and got stiff. So he's, he's limping. He didn't get kicked by a horse. Um, he claims it's old age, which I guess that could happen. Uh, but anyways, he'll be fine. Um, 
and uh, we'll see if we can get it moved out into the pasture and, and hopefully the horses like it. A lot of times horses do not like man-made shelters and they stand there and look at it. Horses really like trees and, and stuff to hang out in, but um, you build a shelter like this and sometimes they just stare at it in the rain watching the shelter. But if we put their hay inside, I think there'll be enough motivation to come inside the shelter. We're gonna try and move this building. Well, I gotta take the fence post out here and here, and then I'm taking all these panels down, because basically we gotta get that end pulled around this way to go out that way. I feel bad for you, Keith. I'm trying to help. <laughs> that works. I like carrying panels on my back because um, you can carry a pretty heavy panel pretty easily. So I say there's a funny story and then John puts the camera in my face, but I guess I'll go ahead and say it. So <clears throat> we had one of our board members out and he was all into weightlifting and and such and we were moving panels and he was volunteering that day uh, at the shelter and I went up to the group of panels and I knew this this there was panels that were very very heavy like I, I couldn't carry them by myself but there were panels that looked the same they were just slightly different and they were much cheaper panels they weren't so heavy so he's he's struggling when I'm trying to carry this panel with Jason and I walked past him carrying another one on my back that looked the same as him. And he just he's like, what on earth? <laughs> so we think that that one's okay there. I think so. I think if we kind of maybe put the tractor at an angle, hook up to a chain, kind of pull this end around this way first. I'm never sure of anything until I try it. <laughs> Keith is pretty certain the tractor's gonna be able to tow this huge building uh, shelter into this pen. Um, it's awfully big. I hope it's gonna work. Um, if the tractor's struggling, I'm gonna go get my Jeep that has a winch and help pull it in there. Um, I, 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 I love my Jeep. It's very useful here for things like this, but we'll let Keith and the tractor try to do it first, but I am ready if needed. We're gonna try it. I don't think he's gonna need my Jeep, but if it wasn't budging, I could come help pull it. But uh, clearly, Keith and his tractor skills have got this. Well, apparently it's not made for pulling this much weight with that little uh, eye hook there. The goal is to get this shelter sitting right here. Uh, Keith and I came out and most of the rain that comes off of it is gonna to go to the back and the, the ground kind of goes back there. So we kind of have a natural ditch for uh, drainage. And so the goal is right here. So once we get it here, if we just stop pulling it, it's not because we got tired of pulling it. The goal is to get it here. So we're almost, we're almost there. Belongs. Now we just got to get it from being all cutty wampus and get it straightened out. And um, yeah, almost almost got it done. Then we have to put we have to move the hay feeder, and we have to put the panels back, and uh, then we'll be done. Mm -hmm. 
With the diagonals, it's not gonna fit. So we've determined that one was a bad idea. And that one has a roof, so it really doesn't need to be in here anyway. So we have another one without a roof. So we're gonna say adios to that one. It's gonna go uh, somewhere else for right now. And then he'll get the other one and we'll see if we can get that one in there. And it doesn't have any hay in it, so that'll be way easier. <laughs> we really like these feeders. We actually had them uh, custom made. Um, but we can put a whole round bale in there and open and close according to uh, whether putting a hay bale in or not. But uh, we can't buy these at Tractor Supply, but they work great. Angela has come and got me for some reason, so I guess I gotta stop playing in the tractors and stuff. So I did say she showed up at a very convenient time. We're done. I know and, and how she to shows pick my up. times. <laughs> yes. You ready for lunch, honey? Yeah. 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 I just was like waiting for Keith to get back in the Wait, we just been out here playing in the pasture. We're doing puppy neuters now, um, so I'm gonna go grab a puppy. So Dr. Lydia was gone a lot in January because uh, she works at the elephant sanctuary and they had a new elephant come in. So she was very, very busy and now we're catching up on a lot of neuters and spays. And so this little guy is going to get neutered. Are you worried? It's okay. It could be okay. His mama came and got adopted. What, like the His mama day, got yeah. adopted. Oh, yay! Get your She'll pies on there. Good baby. Good baby. Perfect. 21. Nope. So we started using DoorDash for random things that we really need. And it is cheaper than having an employee run down to Tractor Supply and get it. So um, we needed shavers, got them through DoorDash. They're delivering them right now, so I'm gonna go grab the shavers. He's so fancy. All right, I'm gonna pass him off to you and go help Dr. Nancy. Thanks, Tony. Yep. That was a great day. We were able to um, sterilize three cats and five dogs, so less puppies and kittens on the streets. That's our, that's our goal. Yeah, Dr. Nancy and I had a really fun day working together today. I'm so grateful that she's here. Um, we were able to get a lot done. And before Dr. Nancy was here, it was always kind of like putting out fires and we put together agendas and we never got to all of the things that needed to be gotten to. Um, and the auction intake process without a full-time vet just looks really different because you can't spend you know, two hours looking at every animal. So I'm really grateful that she's here. She's taught me a lot of things about equine medicine and um, we did some small animal stuff together today too. So it's just really amazing to be able to go uh, to a much deeper level of veterinary medicine and to repeat more diagnostics and instead of um, you know, speculating about a cat being pregnant, we got the ultrasound right out and, and can do those kind of more definitive diagnostics. So it's been, it's been, good having it's been you here, wonderful. Because again, you're teaching me small animal that I have not used in years that way. Yeah. So, but as you said, being here every day, picking up on things just yeah. like this morning, on uh, Nevaeh, you know, she had a murmur, but on intake day, she was so excited, I couldn't hear yeah. that. But today, when she was playing peacefully, we could pick up on that. So, yeah. So yeah, daily, just looking at them, things change too as they come in and look yeah. at them. So it makes a lot, world of difference being able to have that continuity every day to yeah. follow through, pick up on those little minor things that are hidden 
that yeah. part of it. So, yeah. so that makes it wonderful. But yeah, it's wonderful having you here to consult, just yeah. to bounce ideals off of on different things, even large animal that way. And again, you're teaching me the small animal stuff I've not used in 20 years. Well, I need to relearn. We're, so. we're, we're relearning together. Yes. And it's been really nice for me too. I have four kids, so. Um, and another full-time job. So it's been really amazing knowing that the animals here at Horse Plus are getting what they need and I've yeah. been able to. But you're still just a phone call away. From back off of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that extra backup call sometimes. Sometimes you just need that little extra. Absolutely. Call. Having a colleague that you can just run medical ideas by. And we've got some really exciting surgical procedures planned that I don't know that I would have been able to tackle as a solo vet. Sometimes you need more sets of fully trained hands, so I'm excited to yeah. tackle some more complicated cases with you. Perfect, I would say I'm looking forward to Ginger especially, yeah. so we'll start with her and we'll continue on hopefully. Yeah. So, we started with Odin now on that. Yeah. So we, we started with Odin and we'll move on to others. So. Yeah, I do hope we get to do more eyeballs though there. Yeah, eyeballs are a whole unique little thing yeah. by themselves. So. Like little planets yes. stuck in a head. So today is farrier day, so we're out trying to catch horses. We're gonna try to do as many as we can today. And we're hopefully gonna lay down some Mustangs so they can get some regular farrier care, even though they're not trained enough to pick up their feet yet. So today's farrier day, Kimberly has got us a good list together. She's excellent on keeping up on our farrier care when they're due, things like that. And uh, we have several today that should be uh, easy to do, easy being relative term, not on my back. Our farrier will be the one having to do the work. Uh, my role today is to sedate if we need some sedation. We have the ability to do dormicidin gel, which owners can get at home from the veterinarian. Or if it's a one that's not been handled as much like our donkeys or mustangs, I will give more IV sedation for those on that. So, And then as Corey works with them, one of his training things is, is to work with them on being able to pick their feet up without needing sedation things like that so so that way when they're adopted we can give the adopters a kind of an ideal what to expect for farrier care when they're at home he's just got a small pocket of, uh, of white line disease here on the near front and that's just a, a little fungal bacterial infection that gets up in the sensitive lamina and starts eating away at the tissue. And uh, it can be tricky to deal with, but really if we, uh, if we resect a little bit and cut away some of the hoof walls so oxygen can get to it, and we'll put some sort of uh, disinfectant on it. This is a copper sulfate and Vaseline. Um, there's all sorts of stuff you can use and we'll just pack up that in there as high as we can and keep an eye on it and if it starts drying up and growing down, then we're good to go. If not, we might have to resect it a little bit higher and do the same thing. But, uh, yeah. Right now in the shoot, we have Marty. He's one of the suspected zonkeys, but unfortunately, we will never know for sure. Um, we did take a specimen from one of his testicles and there was sperm in there, but Upon further research, Dr. Nancy found out that just because it's a hybrid animal and it is sterile does not mean that it can't have uh, sperm. So there are further tests that could have been done to figure that out, but unfortunately we no longer have the specimen, so we will never know. Marty had his feet trimmed, was following castration while he was still laying down. We took advantage of that. So this is his first farrier trim for us standing up. So we're gonna have to see what dose works with him. And that way we can make notes and um, kind of go from there on that, so. We're gonna get it done because we have a vet. And the vet can has enough drugs. And the it vet will get done. can give as many drugs as are safe. Yes, this is great. <laughs> we will find the right cooking recipe that will work for safe trimming for animal and humans. Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to do all sorts of crazy, crazy animals and just kind of deal with it. But the more and more I work with sedated animals, the more and more I appreciate it. Yeah. It is better. And the older you get, your body will appreciate it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm already, I'm already noticing that already. <laughs> uh, and you can do a lot better work when you're not having to fight. They're not bad. That's what I'm just, I'm being nosy while I'm here. He has a little tartar buildup on his uh, canine tooth here. But overall, and when I felt back in there on his molars, they're not that bad. I mean, um, they're just barely a little bit of sharp points. So um, we'll keep a check on them because um, you want to keep their teeth in good shape, but you don't want to overfloat. That's one of the biggest things I've run into is a lot of the lay dentists want to float teeth every six months. And that's overdoing it because once you, if you're grinding down the tooth and horses only have a finite amount of tooth, so you can actually speed up your horse's demise by uh, taking off too much too often. So that's why I'm one of those of check, keep an eye on it, make a note and only do it as necessary, but definitely ch check a minimum of once a year on that to see what shape they're in because every horse grows out at a different rate too. Um, this is copper sulfate mixed with Vaseline. And it's just really good stuff that you can use for thrush, for white line. Um, it helps to clear it up. So we're just doing this kind of as a treatment slash preventative. He's not terrible, but we don't get to handle his feet very often because, you know, he's a wild animal, so. We had a good day today. We got uh, we got ten of them done. A bunch of ornery mules. Had to lay a couple down. It was a uh, it was a fun day. It was a fun day. So I'm uh, pretty pretty happy with what we had and pretty happy with what we got done for sure. each morning with staff meeting. And this morning, um, there's been a whole bunch of craziness in the office because of something Dawn did yesterday. So we're gonna let her explain herself. We've just gone through a lot of changes lately and everybody here stepped up and jumped in and helped wherever needed for all the missing positions. And they always like the stuff that I make. So I made this donkey and I drew, had him put names in a cup to um, give out to somebody. And that way we can just, have some fun and not be so stressed out with all the changes we've had going. So what happened though when you brought it to work? Is that uh, yesterday I brought it to work and I had gone to lunch and came back and he was missing. Sources tell me that Jason took off with it. <laughs> he followed me to the media room. He I, followed. I, I, I. So when I left last night, I locked it in the cabinets in my office so it would still be there in the morning. You have to be here to draw or to win. So if I pull a name and I think everybody's here. And we get to find out who mm -hmm. gets to adopt the little donkey. That's I should have made adoption makers <laughs> <laughs> on Dallas, but she's not here. Oh. Oh. The suspense builds. <laughs> is not here today. <laughs> Keith, um, if you watched the video earlier, he was putting up a shelter and he has needed to go to the doctor for a while to get his leg checked out. Angela messaged me early this morning. She's like, I finally convinced him. So Keith and Angela are off at the doctor. So Keith is not here to get the donkey. So who's gonna get the donkey? <laughs> Angela. <laughs> no, I, I'm not even. Oh, yeah. Corey. <laughs> Very fitting since you like long ears. Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah. I'm giving it away. I know a little girl, I love it. Awesome, awesome. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any suggestions on what I should make for next week? Hippopotamus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a turtle. A turtle? A turtle. <laughs> a turtle. You could just passive aggressively put these animals on people's desks for how they're behaving. <laughs> like today, you're a turtle. Uh, actually, you're a sloth. So one thing that I do want to address is we are in a um, severe threat of tornadoes um, today. It'll be from two to four o'clock. I've been watching the weather since yesterday, and the threat has keep rising. I mean, they always are like, you never know what's going to happen. If um, Sometimes I watch them and then it, it goes down. We're like, oh, we don't have to worry. But it does keep rising and we are in the path of those storms. So we, we can go to our safe places and, and wait out the storm. So if there's somewhere that you can go and you know, we, if we need to leave early, then that's what's gonna happen. And then we try when there's a tornado um, threat is that we don't want horses in barns. Um, just because they're much safer outside and just keep all the animals safe and animals out of the training barn. So we need to have that done by noon. All right, be safe. Let's go to work. So we do have a tornado uh, watch in effect. Um, when we hit the tornado warning mark, that's when an actual tornado has touched down and um, it's in our area somewhere. Um, I guess the storms are supposed to be pretty bad and they're supposed to kick off around about two or four. So we're just making sure all the animals are out of the barns. In case the tornado does touch down out here, it doesn't destroy the barns on top of horses because then there's, there's not really any way for them to survive in that situation. They have a much better chance of surviving outside, so like in their pastures. So Ginger is the last one I gotta grab out of the vet barn, and then I have to get a couple out of the arena, and then one out of the training barn, but I'm probably gonna train that one before I get it out of the training barn. So just do a little bit of work with it. But yep, I'm gonna get Ginger caught. She's going in the pasture right back here behind the vet barn. And then I gotta grab the truck and the trailer, and get the donkeys and Mr. Hawaii out of the arena. And yeah, hopefully we don't have any tornadoes out here, but we're gonna be prepared anyways. Hi, Ginger. I know, you don't like me. Ginger is in here because she has a puncture wound on her back left uh, cannon bone. We did do x-rays on that and we need to let that heal up so we can do surgery on her club foot and try to fix that. But we can't do that surgery until that puncture wound heals up because then she may be potentially lame on two legs. Um, once we do the surgery on the club foot, um, she does have to be limited to the motion she can, um, or the movement she can do. So she is in here to be away from everybody else. Uh, she should technically still be in quarantine. Luckily, this pen right back up here behind us doesn't have any horses touching it. So she can be out there for the time being until this tornado warning is over, tornado watch is over. And then she'll come right back in here. Come on, let's go. Ooh, it's slippery. I just need to grab the keys for Big Red, let it warm up, and then go ahead and get Mr. Hawaii caught and put the donkeys on the trailer, and then we'll be good to go. So I messed up. I didn't wait for Isabella, and I started backing the trailer up, but I am ready to move the donkeys. So I'm gonna get them run on the trailer. Um, we're probably gonna get Mr. Hawaii out of there first, so he's not running around. Uh, he is blind, so we don't want him running into things. Um, let's see if David's over here to help me with that. Got him!
All right, they're gonna hang out for a minute. Uh, David's gonna get it all ready to run them up. And I'll back up to the gates up there and then we'll send them up the alleyway. Hey, if you go to the left, This one's defective. So we got the donkeys and Mr. Hawaii up. Um, I only got one horse left that I need to move out of the barn area, but she'll be pretty easy. I'm gonna get her worked first though, and then get her out. Cora here. Um, she spent the night in here last night, so that's why there's so much manure on the ground here. Um, after I get out of here, I'm actually gonna sleep this all up. And then probably pressure wash it out so it's got time to dry over the weekend, be nice and clean when I get back on Monday. To start off, I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm gonna wait for her to kind of look at me. Good girl. And when she does, I'm gonna take a couple steps back here. She is very fearful of people. Um, she will let me catch her. I just gotta, I gotta give her her time. I gotta wait for her to kind of reach out and make that first contact. And then I could start petting her on her shoulder. If I just go in and rush it, it's gonna scare her and she's not gonna wanna stay. She's gonna wanna try to leave. Let me go ahead and try to reach out and touch your shoulder. There we go. But I still want her to kind of reach out and make that contact. Good girl, just like that. All right, that is it for Cora today. Now I gotta figure out where she's going in case the storm does go through and we have some tornadoes. I hope we don't, but I wanna get her in a good spot where we don't have a barn coming down on top of her if that's the case. I am very happy with how she did today. Um, we got her last Monday. So this is about I'd say the fifth time I've worked with her since she got back here. I'm very happy with the progress. We're gonna keep building on this. We'll just keep letting her know that when she's around people, it's not a bad deal. Um, I know the main thing that she will need work on will probably be the haltering aspect when they first go out to get her. She did do pretty good when I let her in loose in the round pen here and I came back in here to get here. She was already ready for me to catch her. She didn't have to do any unnecessary running around. So we'll just keep building on this. All right, let's go.